Okay, good morning, guys. We're going to go ahead and get started. Sorry, we're a little bit after our 8.30 start time. We do have coffee coming, but Jarvis is bringing it up in stages. So you're just going to have to try to be perky while we get started. And then if you about feel like you're going to fall asleep, maybe the coffee will be there back there she, to help wake you up. Um, so first of all, thank you guys so much for being here and for volunteering to be a parent ambassador this year. Um, we're really looking forward to, to the year ahead and um, I just appreciate the, the great list of volunteers that stepped up. Um, to start off, I'm going to just sort of introduce our team. I think you know most of these faces up here. Um, as I said in the email, and as you know, I think we, our office is in a period of transition. So I wanted to sort of talk to you about who's um, on our team and kind of what it's looking like. So over the past two years, the admission office has gone from a team of six to a team of um, five and a half to a team of five and then <laughs> A team of three and a half. <laughs> so let me explain what it looks like right now. Uh, so uh, right here, all the way on the right, we have Emily Smith, who you all I'm sure know and recognize. So Emily has been in the admission office a really long time, um, and been to St. Mary's. Um, we worked together for a long time, and she is joining or um, moving to um, be the, alum the director of alumni relations, which is an awesome job and opportunity for her as an alumna and somebody who's been at St. Mary's for a long time. It's a huge loss for the admission office, but we're really glad that she's going to be close um, and, and not fully leaving our office. But in the, in the interim right now, because recruiting really has to be our number one priority as we're, I mean, it's September and our office are being flooded. Our office is being flooded with um, calls for eighth grader and just students wanting to transfer and because we're just hitting the ground running and this is the start of the season we really don't have to, any time to waste and so Emily is um, kind of splitting her time right now um, while we're down in our office so she is theoretically spending 50% of her time in admission 50% of her time uh, in the alumni office so that's why we're, we're down to to three and a half, although she's operating basically like a full admission and a full alumni, so she's everywhere and, um, you know, a, a, a certainly a, a big help and not fully letting us um, just smile like this all the time. <laughs> That's good. Yep. And I just figure if I just keep doing this, <laughs> people believe it on both ends. Yeah, and it's going to work. You make it till you make it. It'll so that's what I and um, it's all it's all uh, going toward the greater good mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yes. So that's our half, and um, but you know half, and but it's it's a mighty half. So then Mary and I are um, technically the only two real admission counselors right now, working with families. Um, and so then Taylor Dillame is in our office and sort of does all of the, the managing, um, the intake, um, helps kind of keep us in line, um, kind of sets up events, all that. So Mary and I are really um, kind of splitting and, and working with families coming in. The good news is right now, um, as we're you know, preparing for our event, we'll talk, events, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, there's not, a, it's just, it is, a lot of that intake and just pushing people towards the event to a, a visit but it's not really the the we're not in the middle of not close to application deadline so you know, october 30th so or excuse me january 30th you know our different um um january 30th is our, is our application date but then we've got some markers along the way so anyway so we are um you know we are have a lot of energy and are, and are you know excited for what is going to come. Um, and and I am meeting with um, have met with Dr. Holden last week and be with him again today. One of our uh, in, in addition to recruiting, one of our top priorities right now is adding to our office. So that is the goal. 
to add at least two admission counselors. So hopefully this art, well, I feel confident our team will grow. But because we are three and a half, um, we are really needing and counting on this group more than ever. Um, because we just can't, we don't have the bandwidth to be everywhere we want to be. Um, we can, you know, get as much information out. We certainly are on the phone and we're talking to families a lot. But now more than ever, we need our parent ambassadors, our community to really just um, be a, a limb of the, an extension of the admission office. And as I said at the beginning of the year that you might have heard at the opening of school meeting, I mean, we had, you know, I think it was 20 girl, 25 girls enrolled from, the, from May, from Labor Hour Memorial Day weekend to the start of school. So over the summer, we had such good energy. And you know, we were here and we were working, but it, that was largely because of the stories that were out there that parents were talking about, the students were talking about. You know, it wasn't, we weren't actively recruiting. So that's a great sign. So there's a lot, what you guys are doing and what our girls are, you know, as they're at camp, at church, at Basin, whatever, they're talking about St. Mary's and that's making people want to, to learn more. Um, so thank you guys so much for, for stepping up and, and helping us, um, you know, expand and magnify our, um, our team. So as we, think about um, parent ambassadors. I'm going to go through just sort of what, and I, I think I sent this to you, so the, the parent ambassador guidelines. Um, we're going to just, this PowerPoint is just, the, the point of this is to really help kind of go through what we envision the, um, the purpose and role of the ambassador and also to equip you with information um, so that you feel like you can answer questions about the admission process, about St. Mary's. Obviously, your current parents, your daughters are living it out. You, you have great insight. But some of that more um, technical and some of those figures and, and some of the specifics, you know, you, you may not really um, know exactly. So we're hoping that this, this can kind of give you that information. And then obviously, we're here if you have any, any questions. Um, so in terms of parent ambassador responsibility, so what we're asking of you, our parent ambassadors, um, to commit to serve for a full year, recognizing that our busiest times are right now, so September through mid-December, we're really working with families to complete the application, um, having events on campus, bringing people to campus, um, and then again, January to March. So our, our priority deadline is January 30th. And um, so then we're sort of reviewing files in that January, February time, and then um, acceptances go out March 10th. And so there will be a need then to really for ambassadors to kind of reach out to people that have submitted an application and just keep the energy going because we're going to really be reading files and you know doing stuff to prepare for sending out our acceptances. Um, and then, you know, it does obviously extend into to April when we have a um, special invitation when we invite back all of our students that have been accepted for that one last push to really get them to commit. Uh, obviously, you're here, so thank you. And we're, um, Lynn Doby is recording for us because there are a lot of people that were not able to come and we have boarding families also that are partnering with us, so we want to be sure this is inclusive that everybody can be involved because we need people locally, we need people really all over um, to help. So one thing that's a little different this year that we haven't been able to do in the last couple of years is um, return to having our in-home party. So we did this more when, or before the pandemic, before COVID, um, when we would gather by school or by neighborhood, by town, whatever, and just have um, families post something in their homes. Casual um, piece of dinner or ice cream social, just gather people together, parents and students, so that they could hear um, about St. Mary's. So we're asking this year, are hoping that all of our ambassadors, um, and that doesn't mean everybody individually, but that everybody can be somehow a part of one of these in-home socials. And then instead of the admission office really doing most of the coordinating and the legwork, we're certainly going to partner
partner with you, but that you really take the lead. So, you know, figuring out dates that might work, you know, if you are willing to host it, making that known, and then who else might um, make sense to partner with you, or if you don't really want to host or you want to partner, you know, just that sort of a thing um, to um, the group that's going to host and sort of determine what you want to do. Uh, we certainly will try or you know do our best to be, especially at the local and parties within driving distance, to be at those events. Um, so I said, you know, please confirm the dates and possible or dates in advance. Um, and and I'll get to this in a second, but you know, helping with the list. We're not expecting you to come up with, you know, the exactly everybody that you're going to invite. We we have a database, we have prospective family, so we can help provide that. But we're just hoping that you will take more um, of the ownership and let us, certainly, we want to we'll partner, we're going to be a part of it, but that some of that you can um, kind of oversee. Uh, and I'll get to, I'll introduce Laura Barnett in just a second because she's going to really help with that, help with some of that too. Uh, we also have created a, an event checklist that I will we'll show you in a bit. Uh, that really will help you, hopefully help you um, just kind of think about the things that we feel like are important and then not worry about the things that we don't really feel like is important. We want this to just be a casual, not something that is that you're you know planning the party of your life, that it's, this is just a casual gathering. Um, and then whatever that you know might look different for different people, but we really don't want this to be intimidating. We want to make this as easy as possible. Uh, for you. Kate, do you yeah. have an idea, and I'm sure it will vary depending on the house or whatever, but like an idea of what an optimal number would be for that gathering? I, I think it depends on where it is. Um, and, um, you know, there's, you, you want that there people to be there, so it feels like you, there's energy and, you know, you've got current students, some um, parents, uh, but you also, we don't need it to be so large that, you know, it's, people are sort of getting lost. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really think there's a, and we may have to do some real, maybe some brainstorming, especially within the day group, mm -hmm. because we've done some different models of this within the day group. We've done school specific. Um, you know, I think we've done like a St. Tim's group before because that in itself is kind of a its own group, um, right? Because we've had times when we've had back in the day we had you know two St. Tim's girls come in a year, but then we've had a time when we've had you know fifteen or twenty, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, so you could have your own party with that group, um, but then if you had a Lexington, Kentucky group, you may only have three girls that could come to that party. Um, so we may need to be really strategic when it comes to the day group um, and how we want to work on that. Um, and I think, um, you know, I way back in the day when I did a lot of North and South Carolina boarding travel, I, I would do these in Charlotte and we might have 10 girls at a Charlotte party and we would have a great time and all 10 of those girls and their parents felt like they had plenty of one-on-one, -on -one, but you also had a really nice sized group where it didn't feel um, really quiet and dull either, you know, so um, we'll, we'll definitely want to really talk through this. Um, so that's a really good question because I think there is a delicate balance um, there because a huge party, you don't want people to get lost in the crowd either. Well, I'll say, and this is a good time, I'll go ahead and bring up Laura, I'll wait to do this, but that, this is a good segue. Um, we would have, when we were really doing them, targeting them, Mary and I used to partner on the day market, so we really could sort of spread out across the triangle and did these really by zip code. I mean, that was sort of the best way. And we would have we would have a list where we'd invite, I mean, 75 to 90 people. 
not not nearly that many would come, but we would have a party where you, we'd easily have 50 people with the parents and the, um, so one thing that Laura, so if you all haven't met, this is Laura Barnett, and so her daughter Audrey, Audrey is a 10th grade day student, and she is the um, PA committee chair for this, for the parent ambassador. So you've got received emails from her, um, and that will continue, and we've talked about that she can really help streamline this. So if you leave this meeting and say, you know, I'd really like to host a party, let Laura know. And then she's going to intake all of that. And if five people that live in the same neighborhood or live really close say that, okay, so then we're going to be thoughtful about maybe it doesn't, I mean, that doesn't make sense. And so let's see how we can partner. And so she's really going to help us kind of figure out. And we're also going to look at our inquiries and, you know, the our prospects. And that's where we're, we would be generating the list. And so sort of see... Um, and we imagine there's going to be a, we're going to have a large day group. And so figuring out where are the best places so that we can, you know, make the most of our parent ambassadors and then also locations for them. So that's a good question. And Laura's really going to, you know, we'll work closely with her to sort of help um, be strategic and figure out what makes sense. So we're not doubling up on the work, but we can kind of maximize. So you yeah. pull some student ambassadors into this too? Yeah, so the thing, the thought is, um, you know, certainly the host, if your daughter wants to come, or we would, you know, certainly want her to be there, and then kind of figuring out what other students make sense. Yeah. Um, you know, because we, we want there to be enough students so that, um, you know, the prospective students, there's plenty of them there, but we don't need if there's, you know, I hope we'll have more. In some place, smaller towns or places we could have, you know, five prospective students. We don't, you know, we want to find that balance. But yes, I mean, our student ambassadors, they're doing so much for us on campus. And this is another way that um, we also have a, a gr new group this year um, of seniors called our leaders and residents that have um, their day students that um, well their day students that have, and boarders that are part of this were um, accepted to, uh, into this merit pilot scholarship program um, to really help us enhance um, the vibrant community life on campus as we're coming out of COVID and so this is another way that we thought we could use those girls and um, our student ambassadors, and then obviously the, ho the parent hosts to their daughters too. Um, so we're of course asking for you to provide um, prospective family or prospective girls, preferably seventh grade and up. Um, so anybody that you know that might be interested or might have mentioned, oh, you know, there's a lot of great things going on at St. Mary's, can you tell me more? There will be, um, obviously you can't really click here, but there is a link to um, an easy Google form that will allow you to input that information. Uh, and we just ask that you at least mention it to the parents. We don't, you know, where we don't want to, um, if somebody's absolutely not interested, you know, we don't, we don't, we just want them to have the heads up. Uh, or to at least say, do you mind, if, there's no pressure, but do you mind if, if I put you on the same areas list, you can start receiving information uh, from them. So we're asking if possible by for five deferrals by October 7th. So that's kind of the fall break time. Um, this is some of what Laura talked about over the summer when she reached out to you guys, um, assisting with our on-campus events. So we are our big event coming up, and really what we're driving our prospective families to right now are our overnight visitation days. Um, and especially because we have fewer people in our office, it's, we're putting, you know, our rotation, overnight visitations are really the best way to get a comprehensive look at the St. Mary's experience. Um, and we're putting a lot of effort into those, so we're really trying to push people to those as much as possible. We know everybody's not gonna be able to come, you know, we'll need to still do individual visits, but we're hoping that we can get as many people there as possible. Um, and so the way that, especially if those coming up, um, there's a parent social on Friday night, 
um, excuse me, on Thursday night, and then there's ways during the day, the visit, so the, the, we haven't had the overnight piece since before COVID, and, and fun fact, we looked back and realized we had two overnight visitations in tw the 2019-2020 school year, so obviously we all went home in March, but we had two before then, and we had a of our students that spent the night did the overnight piece so they come like in the evening for dinner get a taste of boarding and then are here with the day um, prospective families on the next day but of those students that chose to spend the night we had a hundred percent yield so everybody in those two that that's that came chose to come to St. Mary so we know that and a lot of schools still even before COVID don't do those overnights but those are really beneficial for us and our girls do a great job of uh, i mean we, we leave we obviously have a lot of trust in them because we leave them for a long time with the students unsupervised uh, uh, i mean they're, you know they're they're all, not all running in raleigh but they're on campus and all that but we're not you know monitoring what they're talking about so that says a lot about our girls um, so we're really excited to bring that back um, but so that's sort of the main kind of on-campus event Laura do you want to talk for just a second about oh, those so events and how when Katie asked me to do this I would love to help but I'm somewhat of a new parent as well because my daughter's only been here one year so I was like how can I educate myself so when I do come to the parties and I have people over or I'm helping someone host it, how can I answer all the questions that these parents are gonna have? Because, you know, unless you're reading the buzz every, from front to back every Friday, which I'm guilty, I just read it every Friday. Um, how, so last night I'm like combing through everything. And so what I did was I came up with this binder. If you go on to the admissions, if you have to go through the parent portal, it's not just for everybody. And we'll see. explain that in just a second. Yes. Yeah. And I just printed it all out, and it literally will walk you through pretty much every question that I remember back having as a parent, such as what's the matrician rate? Where are these girls going to college? How many students are boarders? Um, how many students are day students? Where did they go to school? All those things. Um, also, the timelines of when they are supposed to have their tests in by the SAT test. There's a just a, and it's so easy to read and so easy to understand. It's not. I print it out, and it's not overwhelming at all. And not that I'm saying that you have to do that, but it made me feel better about coming here and saying that I'm the you know parent ambassador in charge because I feel like I have everything at my fingertips that I can help you all with and also be a great liaison and boots on the ground to the students that we're, that we're trying to attract. And that's all on the click here. Yes. You're, well, I don't know about that. It's, that's not how I got to you're it. Gonna get a, we're, you're going to get a link that's going to, and I'll show you what it looks like. So you'll see it in a second. Yes. Sorry. And, and no, that's, uh, Laura will be the one, like in terms of October, um, you want to talk about this? Yes, or? so October, they talked about the overnight. So we will um, be mingling with all the parents that are staying for the social, and that's on Thursday night. And I'll have a sign up genius as to who can come, and um, we'll be in charge of the food, and you know, the hostess with the mostest, that'll be our jobs. The following day on campus, um, we'll need greeters. You know, people, I think we're going to have food trucks, as Katie mentioned earlier to me. Um, so we're going to be there when all the parents are there with name tags on so they know that we're, you know, parents that are already here. That's Thursday the 13th. It's October 13th and 14th. 14th. Oh. Yeah. So the overnight is on the 13th, not on the 14th. Right. Correct. Correct. You spend the night on Thursday, the boarding applicants, or prospective boarding families, and then um, the Friday is um, for everyone. Yes. And we did, we are for the parent social. We are, and we, you know, all the information that's going to go out, I will say we're inviting day parents, day applicant parents as, as well. Um, so. Another question I have, because Audrey mentioned this way back when COVID hit, do we also invite day students to spend the night? 
That's what's going to be my because, next question. Because like, you might get somebody that is on the fence. Like, yeah. you know, I might want a board, but I have no idea what the atmosphere is, what. So the wording is anyone interested in our residential program okay. is invited to spend sure. the night. So that leaves it open. Yes. To, it doesn't either, either way. way. It's not like you have to be a boarding student right. or an applicant to spend the night. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm right in that, right? Yeah. Like it's if, you're, if you're interested in res life, residential program, you can spend the night. Here, we, all, we always struggle with this because what we don't want is for us to have three boarding applicants from out of state fly in and then be surrounded by a bunch of Raleigh girls that know each other. So it's always the, but we want to, we do want to provide that opportunity because we have a ton of local boarders. Right. So it's finding that, so we're not going to say you have to have submitted your boarding application. Right. But this is not, if you want to, if somebody wants to come in, if a day student who knows they're not going to be a boarding student wants to get their overnight experience, we will work out a time for them to come spend the night. Um, so it, it, we, it's just finding that we would rather this, you know, this is really people that are interested in the boarding. So um, for us, we are in, and you guys probably know this because you, I think probably most of you were on the phone with one of our team members a lot. We're in constant conversation with families. So tell people that you know, if they have questions, talk to us, mm -hmm. call us. So if they have a daughter who you, they, if, if they think it would really help sell their daughter to spend the night on campus, call us and talk through it. And if we feel like maybe this overnight's not the right one, but maybe the one, the next one, great. Or maybe, you know, we'll, we'll navigate that with or them for them. overnight for or just day right. And, and we've talked about that too. And that and it'll be interesting to so, say, you know, we'll be able to monitor as and we're seeing as people we already have people signing up and signing up for the overnight, you know. And so that's something that again we can see <coughs> as they're coming in and seeing what the what sort of demand what are the is. numbers on day student support. How, how many oh, excuse me. What are the numbers on Raleigh or area, triangle area students that for? We'll get to it. Okay. It's on this. It's yeah. on our slide. Okay. And let me just show you this. This is. Let me see. This is going to go. So can you really quickly talk about what the schedule is again? So on Thursday night, you need us. With with the parent Thursday, Thursday night yeah. is where we will. We're basically the hostesses. So. Um, the dean of students, or the uh, new head of school, interim head, he'll be there with his wife. It'll be at the their residence, and then I'll have a sign-up genius for food. Who can volunteer? You might not be able to stay the whole time, so we'll just kind of have it broke down like that. And then the following day will be during the day when the students and the parents are here together. I think the ambassadors take the students. Uh, and actually the parents. Yeah, there's a program. Sometimes they're together. Yes. Sometimes they're, so they're 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 basically greeting and where the food trucks are, standing around the table. Oh, just like eight if to you 12, see yeah, somebody, yeah, if you see somebody that you know, like last year I saw Tom St. Timothy people I knew, I made sure I made connections with them. To you know, say if you have any questions, please reach out to me. If I don't have an answer, I'll you know find out. Here would be my suggestion, as we've done it every possible ways to do. need to have the girls out there with the food truck stuff. It doesn't just need to be us. You need particularly the senior girls mm -hmm. because when I would come with Sarah Elizabeth and I go, okay, this 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 is what I want you to be at 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Or when I've taken her on college stuff right. and I see these girls at 21 and 22 and I'm sitting here going, this is the goal. Uh -huh. This is what this is the kind of because that's, that's good they I mean, I've had parents say, I, I've seen, you know, who've known my girls since little up till, and they're like, what we see and the difference in them from coming from eighth grade up till now, 
you know, that makes us feel like we want to send them to St. Mary's because we feel like a lot of that is yeah. because of being in this environment. Yeah. So they're seeing particularly the older girls as to how they are interacting with adults. Yeah. And that, that's a that's a draw of what it goes beyond the academic piece. It's we want those. I want our daughter to all that. that. Yes, exactly. <coughs> we want to have those kind of conversations. And, I mean, it's the question is you want to use development office too, girls. Yeah, and and to your point, Caroline. You know, this week we had a training with development and admission ambassadors uh-huh. together, so that we could do the same training across the board, so that they're all ready. Yeah. So that we can pull a Sarah Elizabeth Bell for any event, admission, institutional advancement, right. uh, so that they're ready for anything we ask them to do. Um, and so that if we want our prospective student eighth grader to see kind of what we know as the finished product or a ninth grader because that eighth grader really needs to know, oh my gosh, I can't even think to college. I just need to right. know what to wear on my first day of my right. grade. Right. Um, you know, yeah. so it's that where are they? Are they just nervous about the first day? Or does does the parent need to know right. what is my daughter going to be at the end of her time here? Um, or, you know, what does the junior pitch night look like? Um, am I going to get in the weeds? All kind of the in-between right. um, and all the things. But to your point, they need to know that they need to see the girls as much as possible. You're yes. exactly right. Um, and how much can we get the girls in front of them? Part of that is that overnight piece too that they've been missing so much. Part of it's the classroom time yes. that they've been missing so much. Um, and so we are trying to bring all of that stuff back. Part of it's the parent social piece that the parents have been craving so much. Um, so we are trying to bring as much of that stuff back as possible. Um, all good stuff. Can I say so, one last thing? Yeah. Because in case I have to leave, I have a hair appointment, which we all know because Grace got to pay me. I can't reschedule ever. No, because I'm like booked out six months because don't we'll have to cancel because you'll take you six months to get back home. But anyway, I will send out, you guys have a list of the dates on the original email that I sent you. I will send out specifics coming up because it's right around the corner. I'll have a sign up genius. Do not hesitate. I'll have my number on there. I'll have my email. Don't hesitate to ask any questions. I'm happy to help. I'm a teacher by trade, so I love to like, you know, help in any way I can and not make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. This is easy. This is, you know, this is gonna be fun. You know, you like to host things, you like to talk to people, you're in the right place. Thank you. Thank you. What time frame on that Thursday night? I looked at the calendar, I think. It's yeah, about six to eight. It's like six point five. Yeah, the parents, the girls go to dinner, the parents are in a in a panel. Yeah, so it's like six forty six forty five to seven thirty ish. All nails out down before I send an email. Yeah. I mean, it's on the calendar it says like yeah. six to eight. I didn't That's the that parent that section. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the what the inquiry form looks like, which you're gonna put in for your um, inquiries that you're providing us. Back up. Um, here. Okay. So I'll let. Uh, okay. So I think I got through all of that. So that was. Um, okay. So just finishing this, then we'll go through. Um, sorry. Hey, one little thing. Given that amazing deal of these kids that the girls that come and spend the night. I mean, unless your overnight is full, for these boarding referrals. Would you want to think about bumping up that deadline from October 7th to try to get these? Um, oh, you mean to, for, for you guys? So yeah, so they can. Well, I think the sooner you, you can. But, but I think people operate by deadlines. Yeah, I know I do. Yeah. 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 I just wrote October 7th in my calendar. That means you're going to get it on the 6th. Um, right. right. <laughs> um, I'm just saying because I just looked at the next one, and that's in December. Yeah. And that can get tricky with Christmas yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I'm just thinking, for, for especially for the boarding yeah. piece. It might be good to go ahead and get those names in to get them for this. So month. September twenty eighth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Specially morning. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So, yeah. I'm actually saying I had no idea that deal was. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And if they can get to that October one, I mean, why not, right? Right. Yeah. I think that's great, Beth. I, I, I think if you guys in this room can circle the 28th on your calendar right now and um, commit to doing your very best to send any boarding names you might know. Um, I'll follow up with the board or ambassador yeah, yeah. and just say, yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be great. I'd really love to have that yeah. on ASAP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Let me just run through these last things then we'll go to the next piece. Um, so again, we got through our event. So your service, the direct family contact. So we're talking about this year for our families, once they've completed the full application, so we know we have every piece in there you know, waiting for, an, for a decision, to connect them with a parent ambassador, just to go ahead and make that connection so they feel like um, at the ready, they've heard from you and have you as a resource. So that won't happen until obviously later in the cycle, but just to give you that heads up. And then of course, keep us informed of any buzz that you hear in the community. Okay, so. Okay, we are at 9.13. We've got some slides to get through, but um, there is coffee in the back. So if you to. want to walk backwards, listen and watch. Um, like we tell our ambassadors to do, you can walk backwards and talk and listen and do all the things. Please get some coffee. Um, and I'm going to go through these really quickly because you're going to get all this information too. Um, so what to expect from the admission office? Um, we will definitely ask you to um, contact some prospective families, um, probably connected with your daughter's previous school, um, or maybe who live in your area. When we say in your area, especially for um, like regarding boarding families, it may not just be like in your hometown. It might even mean if you live in Virginia, we may expand that to Virginia, or if you live above the Mason-Dixon line, or if you live in the Southeast, or if you live, be, you know, beyond, you know, I don't know, Nashville. Nashville. Um, you know, so it's, it's, that's what we mean by your area. Um, we really expand on that. Um, or um, similar interest um, when it relates to your daughter. So that could be um, hobbies, activities, um, academic interests. That could be summer camps. Um, or if there might be a child that went on moon dance. Um, there's all kinds of things, ways that we connect um, your daughter to prospective um, students. Um, or it might be that we know that a prospective parent um, maybe went to um, graduate school, law school. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that we connect you with prospective families. Um, we'll send updates to you as needed on families um, that you're in contact for. Um, and that could be that we know that a prospective student is applying, um, maybe one of our uh, boarding families is applying for our big um, boarding um, scholarship, our branch scholarship, and that's our, um, our one um, big boarding scholarship. Um, and so we want you to know that they're applying for that. Um, that's a big deal. Or maybe um, they're really struggling with leaving home and they're getting a lot of pressure from their independent school to stay. And you also got that pressure and so we need you to help talk them through that. Or they're really struggling with the all-girl piece and they really, um, their daughter wants to go to Broughton and your daughter really wanted to go to Broughton and so, hey, talk them through it. You made the decision for your daughter to go to St. Mary's and really she made the decision and it worked out well. So, you know, we're, you're going to talk them through that. St. Mary's will provide electronic invitations for events and a party box. So what we mean by that is um, it's on that checklist for those events, um, in-home events. Um, those will include the Frosted St. Mary's, um, Frosted St. Mary's cups, 
pins, the swag stuff that we send. Um, I'll give a little shout out to Caroline. She and Thomas did some um, and do these frosted St. Mary's cups for us. Um, we have some little cocktail napkins with the St. Mary's logo on them. Um, we may send you these really cute um, pink, um, you know, the EOS lip balms that you can get there. Um, we got some pink ones with a navy blue St. Mary's logo on top this year that are really cute. Um, we've got pens. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff. Um, so we can send those. So here's what we'll send to you at the top. Um, <clears throat> probably an electronic invite. Uh, maybe a hard copy that we can send out just depending on how far out. Um, the logo cocktail napkins, the frosted cups, because it's a more casual event um, for the girls and parents to use, the logo pens, um, the swag stuff. Um, we'll send you some sort of quick facts, um, admission dates and important events, little card, and anything else we think is important for families to pick up, for them to have information to take home with them. Um, name tags if the counselor is going to be there that are pre-printed the hard thing is if we're not going to be there it's hard to send pre-printed name tags because what we don't want is for some people to have pre-printed and then others to not that's a surefire way for some people to feel left out so we are talking about ways to maybe have some fun name tags where maybe there's a fun um, question that they maybe answer on their name tag as an icebreaker and then they write their name. We're thinking through that. Um, and then we've talked about um, reimbursing you for up to $300 toward the cost of your event. Just keep your receipts. Um, we don't want you to feel the burden of hosting the whole event and um, worrying about that cost. Um, so you just talk through that with us. And then as far as the host, um, of course, you'll take care of the location, um, either your home or if you worry about hosting in your home, maybe you worry about the layout of your home and maybe, um, you know, you have a, a clubhouse or um, another space that might work well for the party. Just talk through that with us. Um, the actual meal, um, we just listed some things, you know, our St. Mary's girls, not all of them, but a lot of them love a good Chick-fil-A nugget tray, <laughs> macaroni and cheese tray, and fruit tray, um, or a pizza party, ice cream sundaes, cupcakes, cookies. You just, again, something casual. Um, of course, we always take into account the dietary restrictions. Um, so again, we leave that up to you to talk about as the host or your host group. Um, I always stress about that when I'm providing for my clubs and organizations. Do I have the gluten-free options? Do I have the vegetarian options? Do I have the nut-free options? The girls just laugh at me. It's so stressful to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I put here for the host um, and with the help of the parent ambassadors um, that are helping them, and we can enlist parent ambassadors to help, um, I think it would be really nice to call the attendee list a couple of days before just to make sure that they feel like someone's reaching out just to say, hey, we're really excited that you're coming to the party. Um, and we're really looking forward to seeing you. Um, parking's on the street. Um, there's going to be a light on and you'll see blue balloons on the mailbox because as you know if you're unfamiliar with the street and it's a narrow street or there's a cul-de-sac or whatever it can be parking is usually the most stressful thing for people if they're unfamiliar with a place um, and it can deter people especially if they're very unfamiliar with um, the place that they're going to um, <clears throat> Something that um, we talked about as a development and admission team on a, in a meeting recently is that 
um, Eileen and Doma in development um, actually created a Spotify for the institutional um, advancement team. So we have a Spotify so we can plug in for background music if um, hosts have any sort of speaker. Um, and then I, um, Lynn in the back is going to be like, oh no, a mojo. We use a ticketing system. Uh, a mojo ticket is coming soon. Um, <laughs> for us to create just a simple um, slideshow of pictures of our St. Mary's girls in action. Plays, sports, res life, all kinds of stuff that we can use. It's preferred, not required. If we need it, just kind of in the background on a TV so that if there's a lull in the action, if it's a smaller group, it can take the attention. Um, and then clear event marking. These are all not required, but it's nice to have porch lights as the seasons change and the lights are a little dimmer outside. Some sort of like maybe light blue or white balloons. If there's just a little like printed sign on your door that just says welcome St. Mary's party or something. Just anything that kind of recognizes that it's a St. Mary's party. Again, um, if you have any questions, talk through it with us. Okay, yeah, hi. I'm just gonna run through these very quickly. Helpful reminders, these are all very common sense as parents of uh, St. Mary's. Um, if you don't have the answer to a question that you're asked, you know, don't make a guess or try to make something up. Just certainly always refer to a mission staff, staff member and uh, we'll get back to you or uh, we'll, let, we'll be in contact with the prospective family. Um, always maintain strict confidentiality. Never speak negatively about another school or St. Mary's. Um, don't make assumptions about a student's admissibility. That's always kind of a tough one because there's a lot of factors that go into um, having an admission decision made on an applicant. And you know there could be financial reasons, academic reasons, uh, reasons why families, you know, you might hear that they're going through the process and then you don't know really what happened. And we want to make sure, like, that's every family story to tell about whether they're coming or not. And, you know, sometimes we do have to make very tough decisions um, about some of our, our applicants and our candidates. Uh, just always remember how much we appreciate you and all the time that you devote to the school and to our office uh, specifically and just really um, value that time and commitment. Thank you. Wait. So I wanted, uh, Laura referred to something on the parent portal that she found. Um, we have created a parent ambassador page, portal, um, that, will ha that will, does house all of this helpful information um, for you. So let me show you, we'll send you the link. Um, and oh, of course it's so you'll get you'll get to it from the uh, the parent portal. This might be it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Um, Okay, so on the portal you will see this is the this is the kind of back end, but you will see a page that takes you there's a there's a box and it says parent ambassador portal. Admission, this is what you'll go to, and this, or you'll click on that and it'll take you to this. This is the back end, so it, it looks cleaner than this, but basically it has a lot of great information. So the guidelines that we went over, that in-home checklist, um, a list of all of the ambassadors. Now we've got a couple of um, outside of North Carolina boarding families we have to add to that, so it's not complete yet, but you still will have contact information and the full list. Well, I think that's empty right now. 
Okay. 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 It should. There should be something there, but we'll go back and check. And we need to add the full list anyway. So then we put some college counseling information. That's often there's a lot of a lot of questions about that. So these all click to what you see here, and just for the sake of time and um, and. Then, and then the admissions, more admission specific information. So the fast facts, which we're getting, some of them which we're getting ready to go through. The admission timeline, so when our priority applications are due. But the fact that we will waive the application fee if your, your portion of the application is done by October 30th. Um, the admission process at a glance, financial aid information, and um, triangle fitness um, requirements. Also, then just some community and belonging information about DEI, um, the diversity profile of, we just have to update that one so you'll be able to click there um, to see the full um, spectrum of where our students come from, diversity information, um, and then the non-discrimination non policy. So, we'll also have events and we'll continue um, if you feel like there are things that would be helpful to have here that are, would be easier for you to access, let us know and we can add those there as well. Um, so again, we'll, in, we'll send an email that has the information that we provide, but you also, if you log into the parent portal, can go ahead and see that. Um, so, okay, so that's that. So now we'll just kind of go through these next things quickly and again, grab some coffee. Um, so, here. Okay, I'm going to do a time check. We're at 9.30, um, so I am going to keep moving us along. You do have this on your portal. Um, what I'm going to say is um, that highlighted number is my favorite thing to start with. We are at 315 students um, to start this year, which um, is a record number um, since, um, you know, St. Mary's became a high school um, in the 98-99 school year. So that is something to celebrate. Um, that is 315 to <coughs> our 325 student goal, um, ultimate strategic planning goal. Um, we um, you can see our returning student uh, column, total 214, um, with new students 101, totaling 315. Um, what you will see is that, um, you know, we've got 120 boarding students and 195 day. So, what you need to know is that um, ultimately our goal is to have more boarding students than we have. Um, so we will continue working on that. Um, we are excited about the 315 number, but as long as I've been in the admission world, um, which is 17 years, um, what I've known about the admission work that we've done is we take time to celebrate our victories, but we never rest with the victory. We always are like, okay, what are we going to do to continue working toward the goal, which is getting to the boarding number. Unfortunately, part of that is COVID uh, because we went a full year without travel of any kind. Uh, part of it is COVID because um, you know, you've got some people who just couldn't visit. You've got some people who aren't really ready to send their kids away in this uh, health um, risk climate. Um, and, some inter and a lot of our international students not um, being able to um, do that travel, or maybe their families just not being willing to um, put their kids through that um, struggle, um, travel struggle. So our international student number is down as well, which has affected our boarding number. So that's part of it. Um, and then the other part is just us needing to figure out um, some other boarding strategies. 
Um, so we're working on that part. Um, but you can see the numbers here. We had a crazy uh, good year with our 11th grade new students at 18 new um, 11th graders. So we've got high numbers in the 11th and 12th grade. Um, we're working on um, that ninth grade boarding number. Um, I will say that one of the really cool things about that ninth grade is that last year we had 100% retention in the ninth grade boarding last year. Um, so even though we would really like to have more boarding students, because last year it was a smaller number too, they're really happy as a smaller group. They know each other well. They really get along. And I really struggled this year because um, I was put, well, I struggled because I um, was put with ninth graders in Phoenix as the late night person on Thursday nights um, after working in res life for 15 years. And I thought, <laughs> Wait a minute, um, I'm with ninth graders as their dorm mom late night. Um, how is this so? I thought I was just going to like rest easy with seniors for the rest of my time at St. Mary's. And I love it. And they are the best. And they have the most fun with each other. And they are so <coughs> cute. And those 19 girls are amazing. And they really are all so different. And they really, um, because there are 19 of each other, of them, they can really focus on each other and getting to know each other. So there's some real magic in that small number, but we really need to bring that number up and we recognize that. Um, so. I have one question uh -huh. as you're talking about the number of students, because I know this will come up. What was the average class size based on? What we're reporting in our materials this year is 15. Okay. okay. I will say, just to add that, before the pandemic, or before in 2019, that's when we were, we were where we wanted to be. We were slightly more boarding than day. And that's sort of the sweet spot to be like 55, 54, you know, 56, 54% boarding. So we have been there. Right. And we just really took a slide with, um, the, with COVID, and we're hoping and we feel confident that we can Get back there. So our total student body represents 14 states and eight countries. Um, our three-year average um, is 42% boarding, 58% day. Um, we have 36 triangle area students as year-round boarding. Our retention rate is 96%, uh, whereas the national retention rate for independent school averages in the mid-80th percentile. So we're doing something right. Um, students receiving financial assistance is at 34%, and the total amount of aid awarded is around $2 million. Um, our strategic plan is set to grow enrollment to 325, grow boarding, the boarding population to between 51 to 55, which Katie said before the pandemic we were there, um, to diversify the student body, which we've been working um, extremely hard to do across the board of that diversity spectrum, um, DEI and belonging, expand the educational and leadership opportunities for students in the Raleigh area. Um, Are you trying to share this slide? Yes, yes it's, it's all on the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just ask people or leave, as a little thank you, we have these very, um, I think they were coveted last year, yeah, our little Turkish towels. Yes, please. So, take Beth, that. grab one of those. Oh, oh thank you. Yes. yes. As a little thank you. Go. Mary, you're up. Yes, thank you. I'm not going to go through this. Um, I'm going to save a lot of time. You all know about our seminar program. This slide provides you with information so you can kind of in a nutshell describe to families sort of what the purpose of seminar is and how you know it kind of works through each student's year that they're here. The seminar covers four main themes each year, communication, health and wellness, innovation, <coughs> and social impact. Um, that uh, they spend about the students spend a quarter of the year on each of those themes. Each year, the content is specific to their grade level. Um, the overriding concept of seminar is to develop 
the 10 key competencies, you know, our good friends, collaboration, growth mindset. I'm not sure I've ever developed new media literacy <laughs> or computational thinking, so I need some help uh, with our some of our faculty on that. Um, but they do weave bits and pieces so that each of the classes will touch on parts of the 10 key competencies. It definitely helps us to um, provide our girls with experiential learning, with experts, resources, and organizations in the greater Raleigh area. So that concept of really, we're in such a great location, just getting our girls out in the community. Uh, of course, it's taught by our faculty, and towards the end, seniors choose an internship or a capstone uh, research project specific to their individual um, interests for the second semester of their senior year. And is there anything that I follow up about um, that slide? Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. schedule. You have a schedule. I think what's important to point out uh, for prospective families is that students have time every single day with their advisor. Advisory meets every day and plus advisory lunch on Wednesdays. That's, I think, a very key benefit to St. Mary's is that there is that one adult is checking in with their child every day and is the perfect liaison point person between the family, the student, and the school. Um, also, I think what's nice to point out is tutorial. That's also every day. We finish the day with tutorial. That's the time for students to see teachers for extra questions, go ahead and get started on some work. And I also love that we do have community time in the middle of our day that we break up our day with two classes, a big chunk of community time, two more classes before the end of the day. Um, I think your girls are well underway with the schedule. So I just want to mention briefly two uh, kind of important aspects of the St. Mary's that have been adjusted slightly this year. So if you're a, a mother and a new student, it's all going to seem the same to you, but if your daughter's been here, there were some differences just for you to uh, to be aware. So the first one is Triangle Fitness. Um, so our students still are, you know, most of our students across the board are doing something in the afternoon. Um, and what that looks like as they get older now has changed a little bit. So we're using subscribing to the three, two, one um, plan. So um, in the afternoon, so for our ninth graders, they all have to do something in the afternoon. And when they're divided into trimesters, it can be they're on a sport team, they're involved in the arts, or they do triangle fitness. And uh, the triangle fitness program has, has changed slightly too. Um, so you've got the 345 to 445 block, and then there's an advanced track from 445 to five, 45, not dollar sign. Uh, uh, and, you know, they have some choice in that, and it could be, you know, training preseason for a sport. Um, you know, they have yoga. They have, there's, there's sort of different tracks for that. So, ninth graders will do three, all of the trimesters. Tenth graders are required to do two, eleventh graders one, and then seniors aren't required to do any. Although, what we found is that most of our students are already doing something and they're so involved that it was just instead of just adding something else for them to do, um, being more thought, thoughtful and deliberate about that extra time. So, that's trying to fit this. I have a question, Pete. Yes. So, last year, and this is important to know because we have okay. classes. Like Audrey trains for tennis all year round, so she did not. Yes, they thank you. Are they allowed to do that? Yes. So Audrey did not do the triangle fitness after tennis season was over. She got an exemption. She had to have it signed off by her personal coach. Yeah. How many hours a week she was going to spend training on that? So then she did not have to do the triangle fitness because there are athletes that are. Tra she's not training to go D one or whatever, but there are. Yeah. That. Yes. You know. So, yeah. so thank you for bringing that up. Yes, yeah, students who are involved at a high level off campus can um, fill out a waiver that the athletic director signs off on that that fulfills that um, that satisfies that expectation. So yes, that is definitely still the case. 
So community service is the other one that there's also been um, a slight change for this year. You're talking about Emma? Yeah, but I mean. Yeah. Um, so, community services definitely looked different over um, my time working at St. Mary's. Um, there was the model where all students had to fulfill a community service requirement. Um, then there was a model where um, only ninth graders had to fulfill a community service requirement, and then other students could work toward a national. Um, presidential medal um, and now what we are doing is um, asking that ninth and tenth graders work toward um, a requirement so you can see here that we're really taking um, kind of the Episcopal school um, stance and um, view on service um, which I really appreciate seeing that we're at Episcopal school um, and kind of that servant leadership. Um, whether you're um, Episcopalian, Christian or not, the servant leadership model, um, I think, speaks to our school. Um, and so it shows that students entering in the ninth grade must complete 20 hours by the end of sophomore year. But then, as you know, we have students enter after ninth grade. So students entering in the 10th grade must complete 10 hours by the end of their sophomore year. And then you can, um, you know, there's a place where you can click for more information. And one thing that I think is, is different than it has been in the past, the, the focus of this is really to get our girls, our ninth and graders, to be a part of the service that's happening through St. Mary's yes. and on campus in our community. So work done over the summer does not count towards that. So we, there are lots of activities on the weekends. Girls are still can do their own thing, but some of them do have some of those hours do have to be through St. Mary's um, sponsored activities, but they have to be done during the school year. Just this past weekend, it got it was rained out, but an example is they set up um, a service opportunity through the Miracle League, um, and they were going to do baseball, um, and the girls were super excited to partner um, with individuals to play baseball, and they were really bummed when that was canceled. So they will reschedule um, that. So they will they will do some things that speak to different girls for different reasons. Um, so I think it'll be nice. Thank you. Okay, good. Um, here's some important dates. This will be on the Twitter portal as well. Uh, we have several lunch and learns scheduled um, today. A lunch and learn for visual and performing arts. Uh, lunch and learn on the 29th for athletics. Uh, of course, our overnight visitation day um, on the 13th and 14th as a follow-up on um, October 20th, a Karen Ambassador Phonathon. October 30th is a date that we have set for if families complete part one of the admission application and it's submitted by October 30th, we waive their application fee. Um, part one includes just that household information, the parent questionnaire, and the student questionnaire, those three parts. Um, November 3rd, another lunch and learn on our chapel and physical identity. Um, by November 30th, if the part one of the application is submitted, then we will reduce the application fee from $100 to $50. So just a couple of incentives to encourage families to at least get that application um, moving and submitted. Um, December 8th and 9th, overnight and visitation day, our second one, and then December 15th, um, another parent ambassador um, and that's, I, that's something I didn't we didn't mention before. So another thing that we're asking the parent ambassadors to do is following our, so prior to our events, our student ambassadors are calling all of the people who have registered for the event to let a student, to let them know that we're excited to see them, to have any questions. Um, following the event, we will distribute to our parent ambassadors a list for you to call as a follow, like the week following, you know, just again, to make that point of connection, how was the event, do you have any questions, you know, anything we can help you with. So, I really did not talk about that. Okay, for the spring, uh, we have another lunch and learn on January 12th, uh, Brown Student Life. Uh, the priority admission deadline, a 
from January 30th where all parts of the application, all supporting documents, the teacher recommendations, um, the uh, transcript from the school, a student's interview must be completed. All of those parts must be in by January 30th. Um, and then we can go down another couple more lunch and learns. On March 10th is our admission notification date. So if a family turns everything in by January 30th, they are guaranteed that they will receive their admission decision on March 10th. Um, along with the admission decision on March 10th, on March 10th is financial aid decisions uh, for those families that are applying for financial aid. March 27th is our special invitation day. It's for accepted students only. Uh, it's where we pull out really all the bells and whistles, so you'll be hearing more about that um, in the spring. April 10th is our enrollment deadline when families must make their decision to hopefully choose St. Mary's. And then May 5th, we start next year. <laughs> Looking at the seventh graders um, for the seventh grade sneak peek. So these lunch and words, is that something that you would need volunteers for? Um, you're more than welcome, but they're very small. Um, you know, yeah. they typically, it's just from 12 to one. Prospective parents come in, we serve a box lunch and present a short um, program and really I probably would say it's not worth you know just coming for a few minutes for that. We've had a small a small turnout for all of them so we you know we we're glad it's we've got some interest and it's a nice way for parents to sort of a car choose what they want to to attend. So we've given you a lot of information and so thank you for sticking with us. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. So with an interim ed, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will have questions about that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one question that comes to mind is, all that's been presented, what I mean, changes, how committed is he to continuing what's happening this year? I mean, what do you foresee for next year? So he's here for two years. And um, you know, what one thing that he has talked to us about is, you know, he's not his He's not coming in and, and making any major changes, upsetting the apple cart. He's coming in to, you know, guide us through this transition. And as you know, there's so much that's 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 going on that's working and that, that we're continuing. And the board is really driving the, you know, some of our main goals, like um, numbers, where we want to be, some of those those bigger uh, issues. So. There's, you know, there's nothing that we really see that's going to impact kind of what we're, um, what we're doing. Uh, and I think, you know, he's again, he had, but I will say he has such uh, experience and, and he's so um, knowledgeable about um, boarding schools, independent schools. From he's, you know, worked all over the world. Uh, and so I think the board was very strategic when they brought him in and wanting us to really, as we're trying to grow our boarding and think about some different um, boarding markets, especially international markets, and just kind of uh, really being strategic about um, how we're doing that. And so he's sort of looking and, you know, kind of everything that we're doing and, you know, offering guidance and, and maybe suggestions for ways that um, we can um, you know streamline and enhance we will and this is one thing that we talked about we just had kind of them we will provide on the portal kind of the press release information about him um, and he will be very much a part of the process for our prospective families this year and next year uh, so you know he'll be at the events we the social will be at his house as laura said uh, so we don't expect that there are any uh, we, we do know that you, there's we had a board meeting they had a board meeting committee meetings last week and then there's the full board is next week and from that we know that we will get some kind of um he will really have his directives on where um you know in terms of our numbers boarding those sort of major things but in terms of the day-to-day I don't expect that there are going to be any major I do, changes. I do hope that he is impressive 
just his resume, his experience, his longevity in schools, his international and um, just all that he brings to our school. I hope that people see that St. Our Board of Trustees is invested in always moving St. Mary's forward and um, that our prospective students, our families see that St. Mary's is moving forward and we are putting the right person in place to move us forward, to find the right person to permanently be here in two years. Um, I have, when does that process start? Um, they're hoping, I mean, it's, it's kind of, um, the real like silent, I mean, we're working with the agency to um, kind of set the groundwork for the national search, but the goal would be to have somebody in place in the middle of next year. Dr. Holm keeps talking about, I have 18 months. I have 18, I mean, I think he feels like in 18 months, or from his start, that person will be named. And so then he will spend the next six months training and helping to guide them there. So that is sort of, so it is, it, the, the sign, the, there are pieces that are working towards maybe, you know, the, the, the full blown um, search, but that is, it's kind of, um, will really kind of ramp up so that we can get to that point so that we, because this would be the time when, when you've got somebody who is, has their, is, is a head of school candidate that's not somebody that you just generally, I mean, it takes time to find that person, especially when you're looking for somebody that is, um, will be, um, you know, the, like we have the interim now, the permanent. So so that, that takes some time, and so um, we would hope to have them named by kind of the end of next year. I mean, the middle of the school year. But it's a great question yeah. because there's always, there are always nerves when you're buying a product that's not firm and what you see as firm and stable and has all the parts in the box, right? Um, yes, I think so. And I, I, I think it would be great to have some talking points about building on your question, what it is that we're looking for in a new head of school. It, would he ever be a candidate for that position? No, yeah, he's not. Yeah, he would not. Again, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. you know, some comment, like there has been some buzz about, like, what happened with your old head of school? Wasn't she interim? And then, like, right. I actually think it would be great to have some talk. That's a good, that's this. a good suggestion. And that's definitely, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And again, we want to equip you with the information so that on the ready, you can answer those questions and not feel uncomfortable. Right. Uh, and so that's definitely something that, that we can do. Any other questions or things that might be helpful? Well, thank you guys again so much. We really appreciate it. And again, we'll send all of this um, and I'll, we'll just send the link also to the, the, the parent ambassador parent page on the portal, but you can find it before you get that email um, in that spot. Um, and then as you, um, you know, think of things that would be helpful, encounter things, let us know. And then if you will be thinking about those in-home parties and then, and Laura will reach out about them too, but she's the one, kind of the first contact as you're thinking. So, and again, grab uh, one of our Turkish towels in the back. Thank you. That's sort of our Thank you, gift to you. We do really appreciate your work. We look forward to partnering with you this year to see see what's in store. So, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.